Today I'm going to show you how you can set up a multi-state box that creates a tab effect for your Wix website using Velo. What's up you guys? Thanks for tuning in with your boy Nino and I'm coming back to you guys with another tutorial and this tutorial is going to be just a basic simple tutorial uh, it might not be you know basic and simple to other people but i feel like this is in my comfort zone so i'm going to talk about it so in order for us to get started uh, i'm going to go ahead and go through this whole entire spill uh, so basically what i'm doing here is i'm going to grab a multi-state box okay i'm going to go over here going to click add and i'm going to come down to where i see box right then I'm gonna head on over to boxes and I'm gonna say multi-state box, all right? And I'll actually talk about hover boxes in my other tutorials moving forward. But yeah, let's go ahead and get some creativeness, uh, creative juices flowing. So I got this blank uh, right here and what I wanna do with this blank is actually change the background. Um, just an FYI after I change the background, hold on. Um, let's, let's just keep it black or just transparent. Okay, so just FYI guys, uh, you want to go into your design and click shadow, turn the shadow on and then turn it back off so that it could actually take it off of this blank uh, multi-state box. Uh, Cause sometimes it comes with the shadow showing. So just, you know, FYI for your information. All right, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna bring this over just a tad bit so we can just add our tabs there okay so i'm just gonna put it there and here and so this is an about us page so i'm going to go over here and let's get buttons okay uh i'm not gonna format the buttons but you'll get the gist all right so i'll click that here i'll add that right there space it out just a tad bit this is really horrible design but i do better for my clients so you know what, I'm gonna just do better for you guys too. So just give me one second and I'll just get all of this stuff straight and cue the music. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over this code. So right here, as you can see, my button names here is actually going into this column five and getting the children out of this column strip here. As you can see, it's column strip four. But if you get the column strip four children, it's gonna show you that it's column five. And then once we go deep dive into column five's children, that will give you an array of the elements that are contained within that element, just as it explains right here. Okay, and so that's gonna pick up each one of these here, these buttons, because I'm actually returning the element ID that includes the word button in it, all right? And then after I do that filter, okay, what I wanna do is I wanna map that, okay? So each item within this filter, I want to go ahead and return that ID, okay? And so what I'm gonna do here, uh, just right off the cuff, I'm gonna go ahead and preview this bad boy but before I preview, I just wanna go a little bit more in detail about here, uh, this mapping. All right, so I'm doing a mapping of each one of those buttons, all right? So each one of those buttons that I have displayed here, I'm going to go in there, get that button's name so I can put it back to its object, all right? And then I'm gonna set it to its object. I'm going to get the length, all right? So this is just gonna be index plus one because with any array that you're dealing with, uh, array of objects, uh, you're gonna have to do plus one because arrays always start at zero. So that's just a little cookie for you there. Uh, so take it as you please. But we're gonna just add that one there, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this state be that length, okay? State plus length. This will actually give us state one, all right? and all these other states. And I actually added this console log state so that you could just see it in real time what's getting updated, okay? And then also we're gonna look at each of the items within the state box, okay? We're gonna go to the state box, we're gonna go inside these event right here. We're gonna go and get that target, all right? So that's exactly what it is, the targeted uh, state. 
and we're gonna go ahead and get that current state all right and we're gonna get that ID okay we're gonna make sure that this is equal to the button that we just picked over here all right so if we pick that button over here that has the same state ID uh, here what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that button up to that style of a black color all right and then we're gonna set all the rest of these styles to a gray color all right so as you can see I have already set it up to the actual colors that it should be in uh, definitely don't um, follow my design patterns I definitely am just doing this quickly for a quick tutorial for you guys so let me know what you think about my design skills in the comments. <laughs> it's definitely horrendous, uh, but I can actually make a better design later in life. But right now I'm just doing this for you guys. Just trying to show you guys how it can be done. All right. And so as you can see on this on ready function, I created here, I created the button one. I don't know if that's actually going to get anything uh, per se because it's automatically starting on state one. So I highly doubt that this is going to work, but I'm just gonna keep it there just so that when people come back to the site, it can go right back to that button one and state one, all right? So as you can see in each one of these buttons, clicks, all right, button on clicks, event handlers, uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go ahead into that state box and get state one. Now I could have actually created code here to like just get the actual number after each one based upon the buttons uh, number one and stuff like that. But you just get the gist, okay? However you guys would want to set it up, I feel like you could just set that bad boy up. All right, so basically this is the same repeated structure for all of these buttons here that we have. We have four of these buttons. We got button one, two, three, and four, okay? And then we also have state one, two, three, and four. All right, so let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. All right, cool. So I'm gonna come up here to preview and I'm gonna click preview. And then we're going to bring this code des uh, developers console down. And I'm just gonna pick, uh, let's see, let's pick membership. All right, as you can see, it actually did what it was supposed to be doing. Um, so let's go ahead and join. Let's contribute to Creatively Nino. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can actually click through here and you can see these frequently asked questions. You can see our owner. Uh, then we can see our mission, okay, and our promise. And as you can see, it updates in real time. And I shouldn't have made the the text black but you know it's e it's an easy fix it's definitely an easy fix but this is pretty cool i really like this and how it's very responsive um yeah this is a pretty neat little feature that you guys can add to your about page or any place else onto your page to make tabs okay uh to make that just tab like feature all right and it looks pretty nice and clean and neat all right uh, if you have any questions, definitely drop it below or head on over to my website. Check out my website uh, and I'll put it in the link below. Uh, I'll have the code there as well for you guys. And yeah, let's just thank you so much for watching you guys. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you in the next video guys. All right, ciao.